Huge thanks to Shortform for sponsoring this video. More about them later. Hello there, my name's Bart, and in this video I'd like to talk about Fermi's golden rule of physics. Well, technically it's Fermi's golden rule of quantum physics, but it is genuinely called that. Before we get into it, if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that bell button for more fun physics content. So let's talk about this golden rule then. Mathematically, it looks rather daunting. Here it is. But don't worry, it's actually not too complicated. What this equation describes is the probability per unit time that a quantum system that we happen to be studying transitions from one energy state to another. So what exactly does this all mean? Well, let's think about a system that we can study using quantum mechanics. One that we might be familiar with is electrons within an atom. We know that atoms are formed of protons and neutrons at the center within a nucleus and electrons being found around the nucleus. Importantly, these electrons are found in very specific energy levels, also known as electron shells. These energy levels simply represent the amount of energy an electron has in each case. So in a lower energy level, the electron has a lower amount of energy and vice versa. That's basically the gist of it. But how do we know where these energy levels are for any particular atom? What determines the exact allowed values of energy? Well, it's essentially the Schrodinger equation. This is the governing equation of quantum mechanics. It accounts for specific properties of the system, such as the kinetic and potential energies found within it, in order to give us the allowed energy states or eigenstates that our system is allowed to be found in based on its properties. For example, this equation will account for the kinetic energies of all the particles within the system, as well as all of the interactions between particles that result in them having electric and other forms of potential energy relative to each other. We substitute in the terms that describe these energies into this term here, the Hamiltonian H. Then we can solve this equation for the allowed energy levels that the electrons can occupy. Now, this whole thing works for any system that we're studying, however simple or complex, as long as we're actually able to solve this equation and we have the mathematical skills to do so in order to find the allowed energy states. Now, let's take a look at what happens to our allowed energy levels if our system is modified just slightly. But before we do that, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Shortform. Shortform produces extremely high quality guides to non-fiction books. These guides are basically like superpowered book summaries. They contain all of the important ideas discussed within the book, and they also have a lot of interesting analysis and commentary. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm a terrible reader. I barely spend the amount of time that I should reading. But over the past few months, I've come to remember how much I enjoy reading and how much it positively impacts my learning as well. And I've been using short form to gain a clear and concise understanding of books that I think I would like because short form publishes short forms of these books. And having read the summaries posted by short form, I can focus on the books that I know I will like. For example, I've been checking out Shortform's guide to Cosmos by Carl Sagan, a classic that I'm ashamed to say I haven't got round to reading yet. And as we can see here, Shortform provides a short summary of this book, as well as an exercise that enables us to think a bit more deeply about Carl's ideas. Look at me saying Carl as if I'm on a first name basis with one of the greatest science communicators ever. Short form essentially enables me to find what I think will be the best ideas for me at that point in time. And they can do this effectively because they cover a huge range of topics, including but not limited to science, entrepreneurship, health, and lifestyle. All things that I'm interested in, and there's loads more out there, of course. Short form publishes guides and articles every week. And here's the fun part. Subscribers get to vote on what books to cover next. So if you'd like to try out short form with a free five day trial and an additional 20% off your annual membership, then please head over to shortform.com forward slash part the G. You can find this link in the description box below and in the pinned comment of this video as well. Please do check out the link. It helps the channel out. And I genuinely think you'll enjoy what short form have to offer. Remember that shortform.com forward slash part the G. A huge thanks once again to short form. Now let's get back to the video. Let's talk about our atom with the allowed energy levels that the electrons can occupy. As we saw, these energy levels were calculated by substituting various properties of our atom 
into the Schrodinger equation and then solving the Schrodinger equation to find the allowed energy levels. Now, in some cases, the properties of the system may change very slightly over time. For example, we may have an extra electron whizzing past our atom that modifies the potential energy of each particle within the atom very slightly due to the fact that the electron is charged and so are the protons and electrons within the atom. The protons will be weakly attracted to this whizzing electron and the electrons in the atom will be weakly repelled by it. Both of these are weak because the electron we're saying is moving quite far away from the atom. In either case, we can see that the Hamiltonian term, the one that accounts for all the properties of the system, will have to change very slightly to include the new interaction with the new electron that's whizzing by past the atom. In other words then, we can say that the Hamiltonian of our new system, the one with the faraway electron, is equal to the Hamiltonian of the old system, the one without the electron, plus some small change h prime. We have to do a few approximations in order for this new Hamiltonian to look like this, but we're studying particularly systems that can be described as the old Hamiltonian plus a small new one. So the result of all of this is that the allowed energy levels of our new atom will change very slightly. In some cases, there might be a slight decrease in the allowed energy of a particular energy level, and in other cases, there might be a slight increase. The trouble is though, that the electrons in the atom are initially in the old energy levels. So they will have to transition somehow to the new allowed energy levels. And this is exactly what Fermi's golden rule looks at. For simplicity, let's just consider a couple of energy levels, both old ones and new ones. We'll draw them as straight lines just to make visualizing them a bit easier. Now it turns out that in quantum mechanics, our electron in this energy level is more likely to transition into an energy level closer in energy or one that has a stronger coupling with the old energy level that it was in. This coupling is mathematically described by this term in the golden rule formula. For each pair of initial and final allowed states, we can calculate how strongly coupled they are in relation to the modifying Hamiltonian. We won't go into the mathematical details here, but let me know if you'd like to see a video on that in the future. But this term basically considers how the small change that we've now added to the Hamiltonian links together the old state that the electron was in and one of the new possible states it could go into. Fermi's golden rule also accounts for what is known as the density of states in the new system. This density just measures how many states there are nearby to the target or final state that we're trying to calculate the transition probability for. We'll understand this in a more intuitive way in a second, but it's also worth mentioning this constant here, two pi over h bar. It's just a constant value, basically used to scale the transition probability so that we do in fact calculate a probability between zero and one. Not super important for us here, but it's good to know that it exists in the formula. So in essence, Fermi's golden rule tells us that the probability per second or per unit of time that our electron is going to transition from its old state i to one of the new states f is given by this constant multiplied by the square of the coupling between the old and the new states via the modifying Hamiltonian multiplied by the density of states around that new energy level. And this density of states intuitively makes sense, or at least we can understand it in the following way. Any energy range where there are lots of states is more likely to have a transition there, right? Because there are more states to transition into. And especially if that group of states is close in energy to the energy level, which is of course described by the coupling term. So basically we have two main factors that affect how likely our electron is to go from our old state to a particular new state. One, if the energies of the old and new state are close, plus some other details that aren't important here, then the two states are considered fairly strongly coupled and the electron is more likely to transition into this state. And two, if there's an energy value or range that we're considering where there are lots of states packed around it, then the electron is more likely to transition to that region. And that is a very basic simplified description of Fermi's golden rule of quantum physics. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit that bell for more fun physics content. Please check out my merch. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. There's a link to my spring store in the description or you can check out the store on my channel. And finally, a huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons as well as all of the others over on my Patreon page. If you'd like to support me on there, that's also linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.